It's Easter Sunday. I'm happy to see your faces. Praise God. I don't know who should go to church late on Easter Sunday when I know that even pagans go to church on Easter Sunday. <laughs> because it's Easter Sunday and they know about Jesus. Even those who don't go to church go to church on Easter Sunday. And I know people who sleep in church Saturday night breaking Easter Sunday. More life. That was just to make us smile. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Jesus is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. That's the central point of Christianity. Amen. Without the resurrection of Jesus, then we have just a religion. We have just a practice of man seeking God. Man seeking his God. Man seeking to know his God. Man seeking to have a relationship with his God. But because of the resurrection of Jesus, we are not seeking a relationship with God. But we seek a fellowship with God. A relationship is different from a fellowship. And that is what we have with God as a result of the resurrection of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am hoping that this Sunday we are going to reflect on the word of God. Amen. We can't reflect on much. We can reflect on a little that produces much. For the word is a seed when planted and watered brings forth increase. Hallelujah. Tell yourself I'm blessed. Tell yourself I'm blessed. I am blessed in the name of Jesus. This morning we are going to look into how much blessing we have. And you will have the opportunity to sit quiet and think about it. Because our very success as believers and our failure is found on how much we believe. Remember, I have always been talking to you people about belief. Jesus said, whosoever believes in me, though he dies, I will raise him up on the last day. That's the first section. The second section is, but whosoever believes and lives in me shall never die. What death is Jesus talking about? Because there are two kinds of death. Spiritual death and physical death. Spiritual death is separation from God. Physical death is the falling away of the mortal body. Which of course spiritually is called sleep. So what death is there that if you die, Christ will raise you up on the last day. It's not spiritual death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not forget that Apostle Paul's dying was his choice. Because he had died many times. And we have a count of one when he was stood to death. And the believers gathered around him and he woke up. Living in the mysteries of the resurrection. Remember, this is the person that is crying in Philippians chapter 3, from verse 10, saying that I may know him and the power of flowing from his resurrection. So how much he had known was not enough. And fellowshipping in that power made it such a way that even at the persecution of his mortal body, he couldn't die. And death had to be a choice where he decides, should I depart or should I not? Hallelujah. 
we all believe the big question is how do we live what we believe do we live what we believe so before we go in let me remind us of the things we've been previously discussing here in Elmins. we have often said there are three levels of believing Paralambano, Greek words, Paralambano, Lambano, and do you still remember? Paralambano is to associate. We all hear, we are hearing the word, we are reading it, we are knowing it in our heads. Oh, it's true. That's Paralambano, you are just associating. By the time the word begins to have a meaning, and you begin to commit yourself to see that meaning affected in your life. That is Lambano. He came to his own and his own believed him not. That is para Lambano. They did not even associate to receive what is of him. He made him an enemy. But as many as received him, now not the para Lambano again. Because others para Lambano. And as a result of the association they had with him, they had the opportunity to believe the words he spoke. How shall they hear if no one is sent? And how shall they believe if no word is spoken? So Paralambano is the time when the word is brought to you. Receiving is the time when you allow it to lead your life. That is the Lambano. The Kata Lambano is when your level of belief has nothing to do with mental faculties. The word of God has penetrated so much that your body knows it. Your soul knows it. Such that even if your physical body dies or falls down or is short of life because there is a catalambano which is an understanding, comprehend. Your body has an automated response to the word of God. So this is the level to which we have to believe. And when we give time to meditation, our, our whole senses, physical and spiritual, begin to know him. So when Jesus says, those who believe and live in me shall never die, he's talking about a state where you catalambano, you comprehend. Your whole being has comprehended him. Hallelujah. Let me open it like that before we get in. So he said... I am the resurrection and the life. That is John chapter 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's share the mystery of his resurrection. Are you with me? Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We are going to read from verse 20. But before we get to verse 20, chapter 15, verse 20, we will read from verse 15. Amen. Yeah, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Hallelujah. And there. If in this present life only we have hope in Christ, then we of all men are most miserable. We of all men over the earth are most miserable. What is Apostle Paul saying? When Jesus was crucified, they placed a heavy rock 
at the door of his tomb because he had said he would resurrect. So they placed guards and placed their rocks so that the body of Jesus would not be stolen to be accounted for as resurrection. So that they will prove that they are right in crucifying him for the claim of being the son of God and the Messiah. There are some prophecies that don't need prayer to be fulfilled. There are some prophecies in your life that God is the momentum. Nobody prayed for Jesus. God had organized times. I pray that at the right time, your eye will be open to see that it's season for the fulfillment of those prophecies. In the name of Jesus. Now, do not forget the resurrection of Jesus had its momentum in God himself. But the fulfillment of his ministry had a dependence on him. That's why he would send his disciples home and he himself goes to get some money and spends the night there in prayer. And so there are some prophecies about you that need to be activated, brought forth from the realm of the spirit to the physical through your own very prayer. And what they call homologio, confessing in accordance with God. Because we said he had placed this world to be ruled by covenant and confession. Praise God. So you would pray as Jesus prayed. And God will fulfill his role as he did for Jesus. Because he said, as my father sent me, so send I you. So that is why no man can stop or thwart your destiny, which has its momentum in God. Amen. There will be fights. Battle is permitted. Victory is guaranteed. So, the Jews say Jesus didn't rise. So they call all the apostles false. And first to said to him, Paul, I see that Overlearning is making you mad. Because you are talking about spiritual experiences from some Jesus who is talking to you from heaven. So this is madness. 600 years later, because of blasphemy from accounts copied from what the Jews were claiming. I'm talking about the non-Christians who are practicing Judaism. They claim that Jesus didn't die. Jesus collapsed and went to coma. And they woke up from coma. So they said he resuscitated. Big book. They explain all the biology. Oh, what a resuscitation. And as the days are going, Islam is modifying it. Oh, Jesus is going to come back. Yes. He gave us the New Testament. Mohammed gave the last testament. So they find every way to balance it of what we have. So they agree that Isa is going to come back. But he's going to come back to fulfill Muhammad's work. Hallelujah. But we know that this testimony is sure. And when we begin to read the scripture and understand from Genesis to Revelation the story of salvation and God's plan for man we don't find anything which holds in God's salvific plan, the plan of salvation, the plan for God to make man to have fellowship with him we don't find it in these places we don't find it in this religion but when we follow the chronology from the Old Testament which they believe and we see the life of Jesus. We see the ministry of Jesus. We see the fulfillment in the life of Jesus. We see the plan of salvation accomplished. And there is something that we are going to look into this morning. So that we don't just talk. Which is where I'm going. After they cover the tomb. The question they should answer. Is how was the body of Jesus stolen? Because the Bible records that there was an earthquake. Death could 
not hold him captive. Guards could not hold him captive. Demons could not hold him captive. Some of you are afraid of the grave, graveyards. None of those things could even interfere with Jesus' moves. Remember at that time, he, Jesus, as man, wasn't involved in the action. But God, who has ordained the plan for the life of the Messiah, was involved in the action without the Messiah. Someone may say Jesus woke up and then prayed up at the door they lock. Same angel. But the angels came in their might. And the glory of only angels shocked the gas. There was an electrocution. There was an electrocution. And when we hear these stories, it's not just to know the story. But when you hear such stories, whatever God has ordained for your life, think about this scenario. This is how you pray prayer. Lord, as you did it on the day of resurrection, whatever stands my way for this mission I am to accomplish as you did it so in my time you have given me angels send them forth and let there be an electrocution of any power whether by man or whether by demon that is blocking my way forth this is how we wrestle when you read the stories of the Bible when you read the stories of salvation it's not just to know the stories you see what happened and ask what can God also do in your time. That is called application of scripture in your own life. There is a ministry you must fulfill. There are missions you must accomplish. There are races you must win. And you know through time, through the time when God has been dealing, that when there is a contention for the plan of God in the time of Daniel, he sent an angel. In the time of Peter, he sent an angel. The gates opened on their own accord. In the time of Paul, he sends angels. In the time of Jesus, angels shook and rolled the stone away. So in your own time, the angels can't sleep. Because he says in Hebrews 1.8, he makes his ministers a flame of fire and the angels ministering spirits. And also, he says, he has given angels to serve us to accomplish the ministries we have. So one of the things that Easter should teach you is that because of the resurrection power outflowing from Jesus, which is in you, death can't hold you bound. Sickness can't hold you bound. And I said that to the level that even our flesh understands this scripture, it will be activated. Hallelujah. Sickness cannot hold you bound. I declare healing to everybody in the name of Jesus. Healing to every flesh in the name of Jesus. Because of his resurrection power. Whatever sickness is rising, let it die. In the name of Jesus. Because of his resurrection power, old age won't have a voice. But the divinity of God in your body, in the name of Jesus. Arthritis won't speak in your life. Hypertension won't speak in your life. Your bones will be strong. Your sight will be firm. In the name of Jesus. Please lay your hands on yourself and speak in tongues. For the resurrection power is within me. My Father and my God, where there is unbelief, help my unbelief now. I tap into the resurrection power this moment. I speak health to my body. I speak life to my soul. Where is my soul cast down? Christ is risen. I cannot be down and I should never have a dull moment for I have the light of life. Lay your hands on your head and speak against every depression. Speak against every pain. Speak against regrets. We will live yesterday without regrets. We will face today with confidence. 
and we will look forward to tomorrow without fear. You won't fear the future because he rose from the dead and gave you life and did not give you the spirit of fear but the spirit of power, love and sound mind. Because death could not hold Jesus captive. Products of death cannot hold me captive. Depression will not hold me from accomplishing my tasks. Migraine headaches won't keep you standing on one spot. Neither altars of darkness, neither powers of darkness. Because nothing can separate us from his love. And it is his love that has made us prosper. I speak to my life. I triumph against and above every form of depression. The weight of regrets. I shall not regret but celebrate for Christ holds my future. He knows my days. He sees my tears. I will rejoice in Him. Father, let the endowments within me begin to flow forth. Let your resurrection power cause your endowments within me to flow forth. The gifts of the Spirit as a result of your resurrection power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I speak even in the realm of my dreams. Nightmare is not mine. But Father, because of this same resurrection experience, my nights shall be nights of encounters. My sleep shall be sound. My mind is sound. I wake up sound. I may go to sleep depressed, but I wake up sound from visions, from bright dreams, because He is risen. My Jesus is alive. No foul spirit shall be or present itself as my sight. But I will see him and behold him and behold his glory. When I worship, when I praise, when I am asleep, I will see him. When I am awake, I will see him. As I read the scriptures, he will open my eyes and I will see the beauty of his holiness day by day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You can take your seat. Let's ride on. It is such a blessing to think well. God made me a thinker. And I started thinking deep thoughts a long time ago. And God has shown me what madness looks like. And that's why I was able, I'm able to define madness. But that's not what I'm, 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 I'm going to talk about now. It's a blessing to think well. The youth, old people know youth to be full of so much zeal and energy. Youth are full of so much zeal and energy. That's why you can pursue everything when you are still young. But as you grow old, you learn to focus. Because the same strength of mind and thought is not there. You must have tasted many waters and seen how life is not about doing too much, but doing things that will lead to a posterity which is referential. Because many people are deceived by their intelligence. Many people are deceived by their ability to conceive ideas and plans and be even able to fulfill and accomplish the plans. That's why I say human civilization is the cradle for human success and it's also the grave of his ascent to God. That is the things we create by our own intelligence. They are the things that help us succeed. But oftentimes, they are the same things that turn us away from God. I mean the things we create by our own intelligence. By our ability to create. That's why I said the greatest temptations is not the things that come to us, but the things we can do. 
so there is so much that you can do but when you do only with your humanness it is called carnally mindedness and it only leads to death there is so much that you can do but when you do it by the Holy Ghost it's called spiritually mindedness and it leads to life and doing by the Holy Ghost only came as a result of the resurrection and so the greatest thought you should have your greatest prayer should be that God should help you think as him and that is what the fellowship we have with Christ is geared to reveal in us Apostle Paul say at the end when we shall be glorified we shall know as we are known God knows us to the full we shall know ourselves and we shall get to know him to the level that he wants us to know him hallelujah so looking at the issue of knowledge last Sunday I said in the physical life is found but in food and drink we eat to live right in the supernatural life is found but in vibrations and energies and you live by your meditation and in the spirit realm life is found but in knowledge life is found but in knowledge and without the resurrection there would have been no veil torn that separated man from knowing God and eternal life now is the eternal life which we have is the life eternal eternal life in the age to come which Christ is talking about is the full manifestation of the eternal life that we have hallelujah so the more you encounter and know him the more the life is made manifest I'm not talking about knowing him by theology I'm not talking about knowing him with your head knowledge I'm talking about kata lambano when without your, your reasoning you know him because it's beyond human scope and I pray that as you engage you will get to know him more why did I mention the issue of our own civilization Today we have become so busy with the way we ourselves design our lives and timetables. You have business. You have careers. You have activities. You have families. And if these things govern your life, they are just your own design that draws you out of His presence. And I tell you that God wants to hear you speak to him more than you want to hear him speak to you. God wants to see you consciously spending time with him more than you think you need him in your life. There is nothing you can do to make him love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make him love you less because of the resurrection of Jesus. So all of those things that they were saying, they wanted to make it in such a way that they would prove Jesus wrong. You know, Jesus was so violent in his ministry that they were so angry with him because he insulted them. He called them whitewashed tombs. You know what it means to, to call somebody whitewashed tomb? To tell somebody that you did, you did so if it's on fine grave, you be grave. He called them dogs. He called Herod the king fox. You know, there are sometimes you look at the person that is talking, it's like you should just hold and crush because of age. But he knew himself as the Messiah. So he said, News, go up, Muna, go tell that bush dog that the blind. How does that feel? You may think it's rude. No, it's not rude. Jesus knew by divine knowledge the behavior of animals 
And just saw Herod behaving like one bush dog. That's why he had no better description than to call him a bush dog. You know, I sat some time ago, just some months ago, and I saw the way a cock was behaving. I watched the cock grow. I now call the cock chef the quat. Quat ahead. Because he's beating all the cocks around. When the cock stands, no other cock should come around its range. It, it leaves whatever it's doing and chases them. And then I look at the way it carries itself. It will walk. It's walking normally. When it sees a hen, it just raises its wings like that. And it's, it's swelling. I say, oh, is this not how some human beings behave? So that can prompt me when I see somebody with that behavior, I say, boy, you be cock. So, all of these things start so much anger. And whenever someone is hurting you, all you want to do is prove them wrong or prove them unfit. And so all that they were doing was to prove Jesus unfit. Because politically, they said he was winning the attention of the people. And if he continues like that, those chief priests, said they will lose their places in the government. So they have to eliminate him and make sure that nothing about him should be declared authentic. Hallelujah. But God proved them wrong. A man said, other people have reason and grace followers for themselves and departed. But if these ones we call Christians are true, then no matter what we do, we can't stop. That was Apostle Paul's teacher. So then Paul says from verse 20, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Praise God. Let me tell you what happened. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, when Jesus died, everything, every creation was considered dead. Now, in theology, in anthropology, man is considered the microcosm of creation. What does it mean? It means that everything you see in the universe is what man is. So the universe is a physical expression of the content of man. So man bears the whole universe in himself. And science proves it. That if you go to the molecular level, of analyzing the content of man the universe is small so in Adam God placed all that which the universe is that is why man is the steward of creation man is the one whom God has given the right to control all created things so when Adam fell all creation was out of course Psalm 82 now Christ comes in in the same flesh of which Adam was made bearing all creation back in himself including the Adam himself because he was before Adam and when he died all creation died and if he didn't rise then there would be no creation in the eyes of God and so when he was rising back from the dead on that Easter Sunday that is what is called the new creation whereby things are no longer in the same order in which Adam was made remember Adam wasn't born a little boy who grew Adam was made a redeemed man so Jesus rose from the dead ready made man a new creation better than the time of Adam 
And that was the plan of God in his creation. That it would happen like this. Remember, Revelation says that that is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Which means in the plan of God, he had the way his creation will unfold. And so when it was time, he made it in such a way that Jesus has become the order of the new creation. So, how does that affect us? The new creation is no longer in the way Adam was. When God created Adam, he breathed in him. And Adam became a living soul. Now, through Christ, the whole world became born again. And they call that in theology, objective born again. Whereby all things are made presentable before God. Now, remember, Christ didn't become born again. He has always had the Holy Spirit. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit. He is God incarnated. No one is born by flesh as an incarnate of God. So Christ didn't become born again because He is God incarnate. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit. So through His flesh, everything was crucified because Adam was made a living soul and flesh is body and soul. So through body and soul, physical body and soul, it is with the human soul that he said Christ learned obedience. His spirit state doesn't learn. But he grew up, increased in mass, physical mass, increased in physical knowledge. And when he died, all everything in that physical order, supernatural order was dealt with. And now the people you see are life and the things you see, Apostle Paul say, are shadows. Human beings that you see, they are breathing creatures. But believers in Christ are living sons. So Apostle John says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 10, he said, whosoever, from verse 11, whosoever does not have the son, does not have life. But whosoever has the son, has life. This is the testimony we have that God has given us a son. So if a man is living and doesn't have life, what is he? So in the context of the physical world, we see people and we call them they are alive. But when God looks down from heaven, he doesn't see any living. In his perspective, from the spirit world, above the supernatural. And it's from that realm that God sees us alive in him. It's from that realm that we have fellowship. That is why we are able to live superior above every order, every power. That's where Christ placed us in the heavenly places. We didn't ascend to the supernatural. Where highest orders of occultism, highest orders of witchcraft, highest orders of astra or astrophysics ascend. That's not our place. We have gone beyond. That is why if we can just comprehend, we are above the vibrations in the supernatural order. Amen. You are above that. That is why when, when people are healed in Christ, they are not just healed in their bodies, but life is given to them beyond human life. That's why the healing in Christ is different from the healing in any other operation of energies that vibrate. Hallelujah. And that is because of the resurrection of Jesus. He has given to you his nature. He is risen indeed. And he said because of his resurrection, because you have received and believed him, that he rose from the dead. And you have received him. He has given you his life. His spirit. And by that spirit you are made more than conqueror. Sons of God. Don't bother that these things are preached. And it seems to be theory. I tell you that the expression of these things. Is to the level that you comprehend them. When you comprehend these things. Remember it's not in head knowledge. But when you spend time in meditation. And in prayer. And you comprehend comprehend these things, they express themselves even when you are not thinking about them. So our, what we should be striving for, as Paul says in Hebrews 12, we have a great cloud of witness that want to see us shine this God. Let your light so shine. So let us lay aside weights and wrongdoings that easily ensnare us 
and run with perseverance the race that God sets before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the race that was set before him, despised the shame, endured the cross, and now he has received the glories, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. 